Hi Dave. Hi. Dave? Yes? The importance of the flume experiments for geology. Okay, flume experiments in geology. I'm going to focus on looking at ge sedimentology and geomorphology, so the surface of the earth, the importance there. And the, the importance is that we are looking at a system where we're moving not only fluid but also a solid that is evolving topography as both transport fields uh, are, are active. So there is a system there that is interacting in a way that we, we simply don't have numerical methods to capture those interactions accurately enough to make predictions of landforms at the range of scales that we that we want to understand them. So the flume experiments allow us to characterize those interactions whether they are in a very deterministic way or whether they are in a statistical way or whether they uh, they, they take advantage of of some some other technique that we can then use to benchmark the numerical models that help us to, to really understand how the, how the Earth's surface evolves through time and how the sedimentary deposits that define constructional landscapes are actually built. They are providing us with the quantitative measures of signal and naturally occurring variability that allow us to, to use past Earth states to understand the present environment that we live in in a more sophisticated way. Dave, what are the latest technologies uh, for flume experiments? So the latest technologies for flume experiments, the, the, the challenges always are that when you put a, a probe in to a transport system that the very fact that it's there is affecting the transport. So, so the technologies that are most exciting are always those that that are non-invasive and we are getting better and better at using acoustic signals and electromagnetic signals to to make measurements of transport properties of solids and fluids without actually having to to stick a probe right at the site that we're interested in so profiling devices that use those kinds of fields that are non-invasive and are working at high concentrations of solids are allowing us to understand the transport and depositional histories of flows that we, we've never understood before. A, a great example is debris flows. Uh, these are have high densities, let's say equal parts sediment and fluid, and in the past we've had to stick probes right in and make local measurements but we have a huge pressure field that's evolves because the probe is being is diverting the, the the debris flow around it we can now use acoustic data to to look into these flows and to measure the mixing in these flows in a way that we had, had never actually imagined and to measure the in situ sedimentation that we can't actually see um, any other way uh, do flume experiments help to have new ideas in geology or to prove ideas? Ha, that is a great question. So, I they're used both ways. I got into the flume experiments uh, to a large degree at San Anthony Falls Lab when I was a postdoc working with Chris Paola and Gary Parker and helping Chris build the Jurassic tank, his, his basin. And there the motivation was, so this is a subsiding basin where everything is controlled, it was that we had basin filling models and everyone realized that we didn't have benchmarking data that could, could, could actually separate out the strengths and the weaknesses of competing basin filling models. So in that way, they were very much about testing models that already existed. I have since then found that they are equally useful and, and probably even more significant in making discoveries. They, because we're looking at the, the transport of fluids and solids with an actively deforming boundary, these are, we're, th our imagination is never as rich as nature as a system actually is. And so we see things by working even at reduced scale in the lab that allow us to make connections and discoveries that we, we hadn't even imagined that we, we needed to incorporate into our understanding of the system. Uh, last question. 
How do you start thinking about your next experiment? What is driving your ideas? Oh, so, what is driving the idea of the next experiment? It is usually two, two, two things. Me personally, it comes down to obsessing about something that I have seen in nature or in previous work in the lab that I don't understand completely enough, that I have an explanation for that I can tell students or maybe I can get away with in a 15-minute talk, but I know that that, that understanding isn't deep enough. And so I, I go purposely to, to target and force myself to understand the system uh, more completely through, through a laboratory experiment. But another thing that often happens is that someone will come into the lab and, and, and the, the question that you should both celebrate and live in fear of is when someone comes into your office and goes, I know this is a really stupid question, but you know, how does this work or what does this do? And of course, they almost never are stupid questions. They're almost getting right at the heart of something that we do not understand well enough. And a lot of times in sedimentary geology in particular, those can be addressed with a with a laboratory experiment um, in a very efficient way and so we we will tackle it that way so they're really about why does this work what does this happen and then how can we get an understanding that then will be coupled with a physical work I always tell people that I am interested in this evolution of the surface of the earth and it's an unconstrained system so I need to use every tool I have so I if we do field work of ancient systems, we, we do field work on modern systems, we work in the laboratory on physical models and we use numerical models in theory and all of them have strengths but when you're able to combine them you have an even greater strength and in, in a, in a fighting chance of actually understa understanding systems that are often remiss to give up their secrets. Thank you very much Dave. You're welcome.